Hello there, welcome to another part of my um, French Bulldog tutorial. Um, today I'm working on his nose and his um, the, the top part of his muzzle and his cheeks at the side. Um, so you can see there I'm just taking a kneadable eraser and I'm just sort of taking back uh, some of the pigment from the line drawing um, just so that it's um, not so sort of um, dark on the paper and then I'm taking a dark sepia pencil from the Polychromos range, the Faber-Castell Polychromos range and just starting to outline, looking at the reference photograph um, and just starting to outline um, some of the areas that I know are going to be very dark um, on the final portrait. I'm not pressing on hard, I'm using um, a very light pressure to, to put the lines in. Um, first of all, because I want to, I don't want to sort of press down on my pencil and start to blunt my pencil um, at the minute. But secondly, if I do make a mistake, then it means I can uh, take an eraser and, you know, uh, um, erase the lines and adjust the lines um, as I um, want to. And I'm obviously the line drawings down there, but I am still paying real close attention to that reference photograph. Um, don't always trust the line drawing. Um, you know, I still look at the, the reference photograph when I'm actually putting these um, lines in. And that's why you can see me sort of stopping and starting because I'm um, paying attention to the reference photograph and not wholly trusting the lines that are already there. So this is a little French bulldog that I've been drawing. The um, the eye, uh, there's a video where I've, I've already been looking at the eye, that's already uh, online and the ear as well, um, that's online. So if this is the first video that you've come across in this little French bulldog series, then I'll link the playlist at the end so you can find the, uh, the video with the eye and the ear. And also um, there's a, there'll be a video in there as well showing you how I got the line drawing down onto the um, paper. The line drawing is on my website. There'll be a link in the description. Um, and it shows you that there's a video in the in the playlist that actually shows you how I put the uh, the line drawing down onto the the paper. The paper I'm using is Fabriano um, Artistico hot press watercolor paper. Um, I'm using the 300 uh, GSM from the pad, um, and the the pencils that I'm using today are either Faber Castell Polychromos or the um, the luminance pencils, the Caran d'Ache luminance, and I do use a couple of Derwent Light Fast um, throughout the portrait as well. So you can see I've just put a base layer down with the warm grey one just to get a nice sort of um, coverage on the paper before I start to put some um, some colour down. And I'm just taking the, the, uh, the brown ochre 10% and just starting to add a little bit of creaminess um, on top of that warm grey one. The warm grey one um, just sort of mutes the, the brown, I mean the brown ochre is quite a muted sort of creamy colour anyway, but I find the warm grey one just sort of helps to, to mute it a little bit more so that it's not too bright on the final finish. So you probably saw when I put the base layer down, the warm grey one, I wasn't too sort of worried which direction the uh, the pencil strokes were going in. I'm starting to think about the pencil strokes now. So with the these layers, so with that brown ochre 10% and the other colours now, um, I'll start to sort of think about which um, way, the direction, you know, which way the fur's going. Thank you. 
So I'm just going in with a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown just to start to um, add a little bit of uh, sort of colour into that area. Obviously that area on the top of his nose is not, it's not, um, it's not light at all. But as I'm putting down the, uh, the Van Dyke Brown, I'm not completely covering that area. I want some of those lighter colours that I've just put down to show through. So I'm keeping my strokes ever so slightly apart as I create the fur that's going to sit on top of the nose. So in now with a one of the warm greys, um, I'm only using warm greys um, in this, uh, this this video today. So um, the in with the warm grey and it's a warm grey uh, five to just start to um, add some of the grey areas in. Obviously, it's not actually that brown on top of his nose. It's got some brown tones, but it's it's. It's a mix of, if you look at the reference photograph, it's a mix of uh, greys and browns. So um, that's going to form the whole basis of this little video today, sort of mixing and blending the browns and the greys um, to create the colour um, that I want to create his little nose and his muzzle. And I'm not looking for an awful lot of detail in this um, this little um, French bulldog. He's not a very big uh, French bulldog, um, and so I wouldn't get a huge amount of sort of detail into him anyway. But I'm looking more for uh, colours and contrasts um, than perhaps you know the the detail. Um, and also, I wanted I wanted to keep this little um these little series of uh, videos quite quick really um i didn't want them to take sort of hours and hours so yes you could carry on um working if this was a commission i, I would certainly put a lot more layers down and build up some more depth um, than i'm actually doing in these tutorials but this still gives you a good overall sort of idea as to um as to how the the portrait comes together and the techniques used So on the reference photograph, I can see that um, the sort of the lighter colours, the little highlight colours, um, for instance, on the top of the nose was a, a grey colour. And they're the colours that I put down. They're the colours that I go to uh, to choose my, my base layers. So because I could see a bit of grey on top of his nose, that's the colour that I've gone towards um, for sort of one of the base um, base layers and I'm just going in with the nougat now to start to again as I said it was a mix of the greys and the the browns so the nougat and then the uh, the raw number 10% um, it's just going to mix nicely to create that sort of color that I want on top of that nose I'm not pressing on hard I'm actually 
uh, sort of mixing the colours directly down on the paper. So even though I'm putting the nougat um, onto the paper, I still want that, that sort of grey to show through. And then back in with the uh, the warm grey, just to sort of blend out that um, nougat again, and also um, start to sort of create the darker area so that we can get this the top of this nose to look sort of rounded and domed, um, as it would obviously it's coming down to the crease on the top of his nose. Um, and that's why I'm sort of curving my little strokes to sort of give that dimension over the top of the nose, um, keeping the darker areas towards the bottom and that will help create the curve on the top of his nose um, to make it look like he has got his little crease um, and his little puffy um, area on top of his nose. And just blending it into that crease above as well um, that goes up to the next part of the face. I don't want there to be a harsh line there when we're finished. I want it all to sort of blend in nicely so that it looks like fur, the, the, the first um, uh, transitioning from one part to another rather than there just being a, um, you know, like a solid line. And then starting to uh, bring it darker down right on the top of where that nose um, meets the um, the sort of muzzle area um, in with the dark sepia because that is going to be really quite dark there. So I can start to go in with the dark sepia and start to um, create the depth that I need there. And obviously it's the depth that is going to ultimately make it look as if that nose is sort of tucking round into a crease or that bit of skin is tucking round into a crease. You'll, you'll notice that sometimes that I keep my strokes in the direction of the fur. And then when I'm getting to that really sort of dark part, I, I move to little circular motions um, because there is no um, sort of fur definition in that particular area. Um, so I can, I can move to the little circular motions, which gives me a nice sort of smooth coverage um, without having to put the fur uh, definition in. And again, blending it um, into that area um towards the top so that i don't have that harsh line and it might feel that you know sometimes you're spending a long time on an area um, but that's the nature of um, coloured pencils. It's not a fast process. It really is a case of building up the colour slowly um, on the paper, blending the colours and achieving the, the depth and the colours that you, you're looking for.
and then back to the warm grey just to blend out the, uh, the dark sepia at the bottom. So starting um, on the nose, I'm going back in with the warm grey one, just to get that sort of base um, cover down. And I know um, a little bit later, I'm just going to use the slice tool to um, create a little bit of um, detail on the top of the nose just use it to sort of subtract out a little bit of the pigment to create the little tiny white sort of specks on top of the nose so i know because i, I have to you sort of I have to think ahead really and because i know that i want to use the slice tool later in that area I need to make sure i've got a good base coverage of in this case, the warm grey one, um, because I'm going to need that to make sure that I can lift the pigment off. Um, if I didn't have a good base cover down, um, then of, of a light colour, then the, the, the slice tool that I'm going to use later or your, your craft knife or however you want to remove the pigment, um, it wouldn't work unless you had that good base cover down. So I do, you do sort of have to think ahead uh, quite a lot really with, um, with coloured pencil, um, whether that's because you know you want to use a craft knife or the slice tool to, to lift pigment or just, you know, the way that you think about your colours going from the light to dark and sort of you, you work perhaps, um, you know, sort of like from the, the, the lightest colours um, up to the darkest colours. So I'm just using the dark sepia to add those dark areas where the, the little dog's nostrils um, are. And I know those areas are going to be uh, really dark. So I can go in with the dark sepia and just start starting to add a little bit of definition and dimension to um, the nose, um, starting to shape the nose. Bye. 
back in with the raw umber just to start to build the colors of um, his nose. And again, the reason I've gone for the raw umber because I can see that the, uh, the raw umber 10% that is because I can see the highlights um, are that sort of gray color. So I'm gonna use that color first. Um, and that will sort of start to act as some of the highlights when the, the, the actual portrait's finished. And then in with the nougat to start to build the um, the browns and the greys on the nose again. And like I say, I'm not looking for lots of detail. I'm just looking for the colours and um, the, the the shapes and the contrast and the um, the shadows and the highlights to just sort of create the the form of the nose and and the muzzle. So even where I want the darker areas, right, sort of right on the edge of that nose, um, I'm still not pressing on hard. Um, I'm just using more layers to get that depth and that darkness that I want. Um, eventually that starts to fill in the uh, tooth of the paper and you lose that sort of uh, graininess um, that you get when you start out um, on the watercolour paper. Eventually that will go, um, but I still don't want to press on, you know, really hard. Um, I just want to uh, build the depth with the amount of layers rather than putting one hard sort of solid um, layer down. I'm just starting to think about a little bit of detail on the top of his nose. Um, just sort of stippling the pencil around the top of his nose a little bit. Um, this is a warm grey four just to uh, blend out some of the uh, detail that I've just put in. And also, again, just starting to uh, build the colours and uh, blend the colours out on the page so that I can get towards that the colour that I'm ultimately looking for.
So I'm bringing the warm grey five down onto the um, the muzzle area. I am paying attention to the direction of the fur, um, and I'm just using my uh, my Tombow uh, Mono Zero eraser there just to take out some of the um, the outlines. Um, as I've said before, there, there are some outlines, some sort of pencil lines where if you know you're going to go over with a really dark pencil, for instance, when you saw me outline the nose, you know your pencil's going to be covered. But if, you know, if you've got lighter colours, I definitely would remove the, uh, the pencil lines. Um, you don't want your pencil lines to, to show through, um, or I don't want my pencil lines to show through, so I do like to remove them. Um, and yeah, just taking the warm grey and just, again, looking at the reference photograph and looking at the direction of the fur. I don't have a particularly um, sharp pencil um, so that I don't have lots of really sort of harsh pencil lines. You can see I'm just going between little circular motions and then the direction of the um, the fur um, just to create that, that colour. And this is a warm grey three that I'm just sort of blending it out with. grey six I'm using the warm grey six now to um, start to think about those little creases that um, are on the muzzle and just the darker areas and just following the the reference photograph um, to start to create those I don't want real sort of harsh lines for those creases um, but you can see from the reference photograph they are obviously quite a dark area so using the warm grey six to start to build those And because this muzzle does have that sort of brown tone to it, I'm just using the uh, the Nougar and I, and I keep bringing the Nougar, I will keep bringing the Nougar in just to, um, because the Nougar is quite an, uh, a neutral sort of brown, um, it does work at, um, it works quite well with the grey and it just sort of creates that sort of um, grey brown colour that I'm actually looking for for the muzzle. And then back in with the warm grey five to uh, just blend it out. And it's just a case of um, continually sort of blending, adding a bit more colour. It, it's all done quite slowly, uh, but blending and adding bits of colour until I get the, the colour and the depth um, that I'm looking for.
and as I say, I do use the, um, the, the, I have used the line drawing as a guide, but as I sort of work around the, the area with the pencils, um, I find, um, for me, certainly, the more times that I go around and look at something, um, I'll, I'll probably see something different every time I look at that area. So I might see another little bit of a crease or, um, you know, an, another bit of a crease. And it, so I can be constantly sort of adjusting that line drawing. This is a violet grey that I'm using here, just because the, um, the reference photograph did have a tiny little bit of sort of lilac, um, a lilac grey in that area. Um, so I'm just using the violet grey just to um, bring a little bit of that lilac in. And yeah, like I say, every time I sort of work around the portrait with the pencils, I can, um, I'll probably see something different. The light grey over the, um, the violet grey just sort of lightened that lilac colour and gave me that colour that I was looking for. And then back in with the um, the warm grey five, uh, just to sort of blend it out. Now every time that I blend, I may have to go back. So now I've just gone back in with the uh, the dark sepia um, because I may have to redarken bits down just to make sure that I've got that contrast that I'm looking for. So I'm always adjusting it. I'm always going back in and um, darkening something. If I if I add a colour to an area that's um, you know, next to that dark bit, for instance, I may have to go back in then and adjust that dark bit.
So once I've started to create the color that I want um, on the base of the muslin, I'm just going back in with the dark sepia to darken down some of his creases, darken down some of the areas that I know are darker from the reference photograph and obviously darken um, down sort of underneath towards the bottom of that muzzle. And that's all gonna help create the, the 3D shape um, and sort of the curved um, domed effect of the muzzle. So this is um, a Pablo pencil that I'm using now. It's actually um, Pablo Ash Grey. Um, it's a nice sort of neutral brown um, grey colour. A um, little bit like the raw umber actually. A little bit like the uh, the raw umber 10% in the, uh, the Caran d'Ache range. So if you didn't have the Pablo but you had the Caran d'Ache you could certainly use that. But it just, um, it just blends the colours together beautifully. Um, it's a lovely thick sort of um, amount of pigment in the pencil um, so it puts a good coverage down blends the pigments and then helps me um, sort of gives me a good a nice base to go back over so I'm going back over now with the dark sepia to uh, sort of redefine those darker areas And again, I'm just going backwards and forwards between the greys, between the browns, and just building the area up a little bit at a time. Um, just like a jigsaw puzzle, just sort of building little bits, um, putting little bits down, bits of pencil down, and eventually I'll, I'll achieve the effect that I'm actually looking for. I've just gone back to that top corner of that nose really right by the eye just to sort of blend it in um, so, so his nose uh, blends in with the rest of his head or his muzzle really blends in with the rest of his head. And just starting to bring a little bit of uh, definition and um, detail to the bottom of his nose um, and down um, that, that crease at the bottom of his muzzle. So 
So I'm just taking the uh, precision tool from the um, slice tool range and just adding a little bit of detail um, on the top of the nose, just removing some of that pigment. As I said, that was the reason that I wanted to put a good coverage of the base layer down because the precision tool, just like the manual pen cutter or just like your craft knife, if that's what going, you're going to use, it'll only go back to that first layer. Um, so we want to make sure that we've got a light layer down um, as the first layer and then the little precision um, tool um, or your craft knife will take all the pigment back off to that first layer to create some detail. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is repeat the same process on the other side um, of the muzzle. Again, going through the browns, the greys, uh, building it up from the lightest colours um, up to the detail with the darker colours. Um, so I'll leave the, uh, the video will stay on, but I will speed it up so you don't have to take so um, long to uh, watch the second part because obviously the techniques are exactly the same, just sort of building up through the layers. Um, so I'll leave you with some music and uh, this side of the muzzle and also at the end um, I'll move on to the two uh, cheeks so you can see that uh, with some music as well.
so that's it thanks very much for watching if you have liked this little video please do think about uh giving it a thumbs up um think about subscribing if you'd like to see uh more videos and um if you've got any questions then obviously feel free to put them in the comments um or if you've got any comments feel free to put them in the comments and i'll come back to you as soon as i can uh but otherwise thanks very much and i'll see you in the next video thanks bye bye